Caller, welcome to Tanakh Talk. Thanks for being patient with us. What is your name and where are you calling from? It's Isaac from, it's Isaac from the Dominican Republic. Hi, Isaac. How are you today? I'm doing great. How about you guys? Doing great. Doing great. What's the question for our beloved rabbi of the day? All right. Um, yes. I have a question on the guilt and the sin offering. I was in a conversation, once again, with, with Christians, and when we got to the point where I was telling them, you know, uh, not all sacrifices can atone for all sin, uh, especially when we talk about the intentional sin, uh, repentance can do that. And and what I used as references for that were were um, writings from from the Tanakh, from from the Nevi'im and and the, and the Ketuvim, right? So basically, it got down to the point where. If it wasn't within the confines of the Torah, then it, it kind of wasn't convincing them. So my question is, is there something that does a reference to towards repentance within the confines of the Torah as, as an atonement for sin? I mean, I'm just 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 so mm, I got you. just so I can be able to better answer this question, I guess I'm, I'm not, you know, you, I, you get my question, right? Yeah. In fact, I have the same, I, I kind of paraphrase that same question in my head. I mean, because there are different types of sacrifices uh, according to Tanakh. And, uh, you know, from what I've heard from Rabbi Singer and others is that blood atonement is actually the least powerful of them all. What are the other, what are the other types of, of, uh, you know, atonement? How do we, you know, I've heard fasting is one, uh, tzedakah, that sort of thing. So uh, your question, where in Tanakh does it show us this? Is this kind of the idea? But not Tanakh, not Tanakh. Tanakh, specifically within the Torah. With, Why? Because I do. I, I know how to find it within Tanakh. I mean, okay. you go to Kings and, and you go to different, uh, uh, Psalms, and you can see where repentance atones for sin, and you can see God forgiving people for sin with with repentance, intentional sin. If, I mean, if, if that if my interpretation is correct, I'm talking about within this this logic of the Christian mind within the Torah. They want to kind of see that because I don't know somehow that makes it more true. I don't know. Got it. Okay, that okay. sounds great. Rabbi, did you catch all that all right. well? Yeah, I, I did. I'll, I'll be able to parse this out for the listeners. It's not a problem. Isaac, thank you. Great question. Thank you. We're going to yeah. disconnect now so you can listen for your answer, okay? Okay. So um, we have two um, sacrifices that are, uh, that are juxtaposed side by side in Scripture. And um, it's Leviticus 4 and Leviticus 5. Le Leviticus 4, we're introduced to the sacrifice, a, num a, a sin offering, which could be brought by the entire nation. It could be brought by an individual. What, what ties all these sin offerings together, what they have in common is that the, it is prescribed for somebody who sins unintentionally. That's what's critical, okay? So that's chapter four. We then move on to chapter five, and just a little bit of a warning. The Christian Bibles um, break the chapters up here differently than we do, okay? Uh, the chapter breaks that the Christians have were done by the Archbishop of Canterbury, named is Stephen Langston in the 13th century. Very, in most cases, we use that we, we use that in our regular Torah book, not an actual Torah scroll. There we have our beginnings and our ends, our breaks, our end paragraphs. That has nothing to do with this. But just so you understand, we're going to be talking about the Asham offering, which is not a sin offering, but it sounds very similar, and that is a guilt offering. The guilt offering we're introduced to is brought for the penitent, for the person who's really sorry about what he's done. Now, there are folks who get caught and committing a, a hideous crime, and then before their sentencing, they make all kinds of speeches to the jury and to the judge. Uh, I'm so sorry, I, you know, but the jury has already convicted the person, now it's sentence time, and then people get really apologetic about things. And we've seen this, you see it all the time in the American courtroom, where someone pleads not guilty, they go, they, they go to court, a body of evidence is put forward that is so convincing that the jury convict, convicts the person of the crime, and then when the person realizes at that point 
you know, it, it's now it's a matter of saying something that might convince the judge or jury to go easy on the sentencing. They then go, oh, I'm so sorry. And, and, they, and, and they, they follow this script of, of confession, but they're confessing, which is the repentance, that's the essence of it, is I have sinned before the Lord in the case of the Bible, they're doing that after they've been caught and convicted, okay? Well, that is, that is not um, very convincing, but here's what is convincing. Here's what is very powerful, and that's what, what comes into view in the Asham offering, because here we do have the repentance, the confession. Uh, what is our scenario with the guilt offering? There are a wide range of sins that are that w- come into view in Leviticus 5 or in 6, depending on which Bible you're using. And some of them are deliberate, and some of them are accidental, but fairly reckless. Okay, What they all have in common is the following. The person let's say, stole from public money or uh, took something that did not belong to them privately. They, they stole it. And as it turns out, there was not enough evidence to convict. And the person even swore, I didn't do it. They're off the hook, okay? That means there is a very high standard of evidence needed in Jewish law to convict. And if in fact you don't have the witnesses coming forward, the two witnesses coming forward to testify, if you don't have adequate evidence, the person goes. It was it was very it was it was there was a very high standard of evidence needed to convict. Now, if somebody is caught stealing, I mean they caught Nimtahaganov, Mishalm Peshlume Kefo, which means in Exodus, we we are told that if the thief is caught, he's got to pay back double. There is no he after he's caught, he can go, okay, I did it, please go easy. I mean, no. That's all just uh, rhetoric after the person has been convicted. Yes, pay back double. No sacrifice can possibly help that person. But we have we have in view really something quite very tender, very precious, and that is the person who gets away with it, who steals the money, swears he didn't do it, the the court cannot convict this person. He goes home, and if he's got that money in his house, he can enjoy it. It, It's his. What happens? He feels terrible. His conscience grips his soul, and he's filled with remorse to the point that he comes forward and says to the court, I did it. I did a terrible thing. I've sinned before the Lord. I want you to know that I have done a horrible thing. I, I've stayed, stolen public money, temple money, private money. I swore falsely, and now I am ready to, I am going to repent. And again, he wasn't convicted of anything. He's, he's, he's free. And, and I would encourage you to um, look at Leviticus chapter 5, verse 6, and there it says, If a person had, in fact, is guilty of one of these things, what does it say? The hisvado, and he will confess, that he had, in fact, committed this sin. So the Torah says openly that he ha- he confesses, he he's repented. And the key point is, It's not like, I don't want to pick out folks who have done this recently, but there's some prominent cases of people after the court or after they got the videotape, I'm sorry I did a terrible thing, I I apologize to all the victims of my crime. No, this guy, there's no videotape, there are no witnesses. He swears falsely, you know, there's, there's a suspicion, but he swears I didn't do it, there's nothing they can do. So right here, the person, this is a completely unique case. Hashem loves the penitent. He, uh, this is person is very dear to God. In this case, the person then can bring a korban asham, which is a guilt offering. And in fact, the korban asham, he doesn't have to pay back double. He pays back what he has stolen. He adds only a fifth to it because well, we, I don't. You don't have to figure out why. I mean, obviously, all the troubles and ancillary elements that go on. So he, he stole a hundred dollars. He only has to pay back one hundred and twenty dollars, not two hundred dollars. And then he can bring a a guilt offering only if he repents. Only the hisvada 
only if he actually confesses his sin. And in fact, the this kind of guilt offering is such that there was it, it, it there was it's called in carbon oil of the Literally, that means a sacrifice and offering that went up and down. What that doesn't mean it that way. It doesn't mean it's an elevator. What it means is the person can bring an offering based on what they can afford. If they can afford a, a full-size animal, they can do that. If they can't, they can bring a bird. If they can't afford that, they can bring even a meal offering. And grain, anybody can afford that. And the asham becomes the is the exquisite offering for that fabulous person who brings a carbon. A carbon means comes from the word, not blood and not spritzing blood all over. Carbon means to come close to God. He's able to come close to God because of that critical step that he took. That is, he's not convicted. He's not confessing after he knows they've got 15 videotapes and 30 witnesses. This is the guy who is off the hook and he just confesses his sin. Ah, you've confessed your sin. You did it on your own. You were free not to. You could have kept your mouth shut, but you came forward. This is this person is very tender to God. This person has fulfilled all the the soaring promise, and that person can bring a guilt offering only the his vada, only if he confesses, only if he repents. If a person is not uh, confessed, does not repent, this ashim sacrifice is not available to him or her. And of course, it's, this is going to come up very prominently in, in what now is the most debated chapter in the Bible, I mean, the Bible that Christians use, is 83. And then is that God says, if you will make uh, your soul a sin offering, that means you'll confess your sins, you'll turn away from your sins. I'm going to, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to give you children. I'm going to give you uh, long life. I am going to, the, in fact, the, the purpose of God will be manifest uh, through you. So that's the asham. It's very clear in the passage. And like I always say to people, I'm not like some nuclear physicist where I can find out like special secret codes in the text. It's just plain there. So I, I would encourage, I just say this to you, my holy brothers and sisters, be not afraid for the Lord that God is with you. When you have the truth, you have nothing to worry about. Always just go to the Bible, read the entire chapter, and you will see it right there. It'll be very, very plain for you, plain to you, that you, and that and then this is called exegesis, which means this is taking an entire text, let it stand for itself, speak for itself, and the passages are there. Instead of what missionaries do, and that is they engage in an eisegesis, which means they're trying to read something into a text and take a verse completely out of context. So there it is. There's the passage. And yes, that person, for that unique individual, a sacrifice will atone for their sins. That is great. You know, one of the ones that uh, that I tend to lean to a lot uh, that gets called on is the one where it talks about grain. You know, if you can't uh, afford uh, the one or the other, you bring the grain, the grain will actually serve as atonement for your sin. And of course, the argument that comes with that is that, well, that's only if you're poor. And I said, it's not the point. The point is there, there are other options, you know, and, and some not even necessary, as you mentioned. So, 